So yeah, um, just wanted to talk about how, you know, when I, um, after, um, so I, was, I used to be working in the stock market and then I got kidney failure and had a spiritual experience and then was, <clears throat> wasn't really able to return to that <clears throat> high, highly pressurized uh, environment any longer and started my spiritual journey um, and eventually was on benefits for a long period of time and then eventually got well and got off benefits and then the idea of well what am I going to be doing? I knew intuitively that I wasn't going to go back to work in the stock market that was just 100% obvious that that wasn't going to be the thing uh, and there was a the thing of finances I think um, I was going to these 12 step recovery groups to get well for primary at that time for my food disorder uh, food addiction and um, and I was really interested in uh, spirituality, teachers like Dr. Hawkins, Muji, A Course in Miracles, 12-step groups. And, uh, and prior to that, I remember I was with uh, one of these people I was helping with the food. And we were, we were doing muscle testing, kinesiology. Uh, and, uh, and, and I was thinking, oh, wh what am I going to do with my life? You know, I don't want to go back in the stock market. I was, I was going for that. And then she said, oh, you should be a spirit, you know, you should be, I forgot exactly what, something like a spiritual teacher or something like that, she said to me. And then we checked it out on the arm. And I thought, well, that's not, that's not a job, you know, you, you, can't, you can't do that. And so, and it came out, and it, I would have loved to have done that. And it came out as, yes, that's what I should do. And that was great, because it was like the universe gave me permission to do what I really wanted to do. Uh, of course, it wasn't going to be enough to, like, sort of... Um, do. But it, that then started me on that journey and then uh, I remember coming off the benefits and thinking, well, that won't be enough to sustain me. I'll need to get some other kind of B job or something, you know. I was thinking of working in, I was going to these 12-step groups every day and I was thinking, well, if I just find, you know, the, there's a place in central London where I go to, to go to these 12-step groups. I thought I'll find something, a local thing. I thought, well, I'll find, maybe I'll work in Tesco on, on the tills or didn't really want to go back into a high pressurized finance job but I thought well there might be like a, you know there's lots of little finance places around there I have an admin job you know it's like not one of those high pressurized jobs and then as soon as I had that thing but I wasn't gonna I was gonna keep my, sp my spiritual practice first then um, as soon as I had that thing that I wasn't gonna I was gonna follow what I wanted primarily spirituality and have money be uh, a secondary thing but not the primary thing for my life any longer then my father offered me to work, run his B&B &B business. I thought that's great because I'll have as much free time as I want. I can run it and work whatever hours. And I did that for a while. I still put my spiritual practice first and, uh, and, and just did a little bit of work there. And then eventually um, uh, someone who was introducing customers to the B&B &B said, oh, he wants to take it over. And then they offered to take the business over and pay a lot of rent, much more than I was earning. And, uh, and then that allowed me then to, uh, then there was even more money coming in and even less hours that I had to work. So it just so happened that as long as I put my spiritual practice and doing what I was feeling, like just helping people with spiritual stuff, it was like I had to do less and less work and had more and more free time and had more and more money. And so it was quite mystical because, you know, I lost the interest to be ambitious. Uh, you know, and, and to be, you know, uh, and status and all of that, that was totally, you know, uh, that was no longer in my, in my consciousness. And I just wanted to do spiritual stuff, but then how do you, what do you do with, about money in the world? But I just found as I, as I pursued, and it was like the universe guided me, like I had this person who helped me, said you should be a spiritual thing, and then my father said, well, you can work in the business. Then I worked in the business, still put the spiritual stuff and doing all the spiritual work I did first. And then someone took that business and paid a lot of money. So, even, so I was getting more and more money and having less and less work to do and having more and more time to do the spiritual stuff that I really wanted my whole life to be. Uh, of course, there were times which I'm not really sharing of fear of financial insecurity. Like, you know, these thoughts of, well, you need to get some kind of prestigious job and be working and, and uh, or you run out of money. But I, I always like knew that that was no longer an option for me, those side things. And I just put the spiritual stuff 
always to the maximum and just put money really down the scale, just enough to live. And it's been working really, really well. And I'm doing really what I, what I love to do. So that might not be fit everyone who's listening to this. I mean, many people might be ambitious and want to do things and have spirituality be a secondary thing. But I think um, for myself, um, spirituality becomes such a core thing in my life that I knew for the rest of my life that would be the core and that money would be a secondary thing. But that can be different for different people. So what I really found, I think the thing I think is like, the universe, I think, if there's something that, I, like I really wanted to do spirituality be the focus of my life, and I thought, my rational head thought that you, you can't do that, you know, uh, that that's career should always be the central part of your life, and spiritually, spirituality can be an add-on. But then, you know, it was fact, through uh, my spiritual work, others were reflecting back that, no, it could be, and I got answers that it should be. And, and the universe has supported that up to, uh, up to date. So, if anyone's listening to this video, um, uh, sort of see what the universe wants you to do, how it wants to express you, and then, um, and then just uh, pray, speak to others. And it may, sometimes it happens that whatever you feel that you really, the universe is calling you to do, that you can do it and you just need to, and the universe will give you permission to do that. Uh, and there may be great fears around that, but uh, sometimes my experience is that I really wanted to do spiritual stuff for the rest of my life, but I, initially I had this thing of like, you can't, you're not allowed to do that because that's not a thing you can do for the rest of your life. Obviously that's imprinting with, you know, parents who are like, you've got to be successful, you've got to have an amazing career, you've got to be earning tons of money. Uh, or you're a waste of space, or you can't, you can't devote yourself to what's in your heart. And also I'm showing this video was that also the finances worked when I did also what I would, you know, because a lot of people think that if I do what I really want to love, you know, I won't have any money to pay the rent. That's, that's the big fear. Okay.